In this series, you'll learn a detailed history of the rise and fall of gaming companies. So, to catch future episodes, make sure you hit that sub button. And now, it's time for the rise and fall of Volition, the game developer responsible for Red Faction and Saints Row. Volition was originally called Parallax Software and was founded on June 14, 1993 by Mike Kulis and Matt Toshlog. Both founders were programmers who had previously worked together on Car and Driver. The team at Parallax Software got to work right away and developed a rough concept for a game called Inferno. But there were issues right from the start. The publisher at the time, Apogee Software, began to run out of money and dropped out of the project. Parallax Software was able to produce a prototype of the game and began sending a demo reel on VHS tapes to publishing companies. Interplay Productions picked up the project and in 1995, Inferno, which was now retitled Descent, was released to wide attention. While Descent was a small success, Interplay Productions wanted a better version of the game with enhanced cutscenes, higher quality audio, and high resolution textures. Parallax Software got to work on improving Descent and added more levels to the game. While the enhanced version acted more like an expansion or definitive edition, Interplay Productions marketed it as Descent 2 and the move resulted in heavy profits. Despite the success of Descent 2, there were problems arising. During the development, Toshlog, who had moved from Boston to Champaign, Illinois, wanted to move the office of Parallax Software. Coolis and Toshlog agreed to move the office, but they couldn't agree where. Toshlog moved half of the team to Ann Arbor, Michigan, and Coolis and the rest of the team stayed in Illinois. Realizing that working on games in two distant offices had its struggles, the two decided to split the company, where Toshlog formed Outrage Entertainment and Coolis created Volition. The newly named company got to work right away on new games including Descent Free Space and Free Space 2. But it wouldn't be until the turn of the century that Volition started to gain traction, but not before a new publisher would buy them. THQ purchased Volition and put the developer right to work on a launch title for the PlayStation 2. Summoner was an action role-playing game that was received well by critics, with the plot being highlighted by many. In 2001, Volition would release the first game in what would become their biggest franchise for the next decade with the release of Red Faction. This futuristic first-person shooter captivated gamers with the destructible environments and futuristic plot set on Mars. Red Faction was the result of reusing much of the coding and development of Descent 4 that ended up being cancelled with Interplay Productions owning the rights to the Descent franchise. Critics would hail Red Faction as a must-own game for the PlayStation 2 and one of the best shooters on any console. With the success of both Summoner and Red Faction, Volition immediately went to work on sequels. 2002 was a big year for the developer as it released Summoner 2 and Red Faction 2. While Summoner 2 was reviewed better than the first entry, it sold poorly. Red Faction 2 also didn't have the same level of success as the original, as critics preferred the work of the first, as the sequel's single-player campaign was criticized for the short nature as well as the lack of online multiplayer. Due to the poor sales of the sequels, Summoner 3 and Red Faction 3, which were reportedly in the works, were cancelled. Volition would then shift focus to a licensed title at the request of THQ. With Marvel getting set to release a Punisher film, THQ thought Volition would be a good fit to develop a Punisher game. Volition put plenty of effort into the game, but when submitted to the ratings board, the ESRB deemed it to be a torture simulator, due to the graphic and violent nature of the Punisher. Volition would have to tone down the violence and remove some of the content in order for the Punisher to receive a mature rating. Released in 2005, the Punisher received mixed reviews. The critics disliked the repetitive nature, sound effects, and linear gameplay, but praised the torture system, the amount of violence, and the storyline. Meanwhile, Volition was continuing to grow 
and reached 40 employees by this time. Figuring out what to focus on next, Volition would hold a company meeting in which employees could pitch ideas. Sticking with the violent theme, one employee suggested a hybrid of a first-person shooter and a gang simulator set in an open world. A rough draft of the game was created, entitled Bling Bling, but some employees within Volition didn't want to be associated with a gang simulator or that they worried that the work for the game wouldn't amount to much. So, Volition set some ground rules for the game that included the inability to kill police or children. Money was dumped into this project where the budget was overspent by a reportedly $9 million. The title was also changed from Bling Bling to Saints Row and shifted from the PS2 to the Xbox 360. A demo was released for Saints Row which at the time broke the record for Xbox Marketplace being downloaded 350,000 times in the first week. Released in 2006, Saints Row was a success. As critics said, it was equally entertaining as it was offensive. Selling over 2 million copies, Saints Row would go platinum. In the following years, Volition would shift focus between two mainstream franchises. Red Faction would see new releases with Red Faction Guerrilla and Red Faction Armageddon. Guerrilla would be a critical success, while Armageddon would fail to replicate the success of its predecessor, that ended up costing THQ $38 million in a loss. With the financial failure of Armageddon, THQ would cancel any future plans for Red Faction. While Red Faction struggled to find a big audience, Saints Row was just getting started. Volition would release Saints Row 2 in 2008 to massive success. The game was both a critical and commercial success, leading to almost 3.5 million copies being sold. Saints Row the Third followed in 2011, following the same formula but perfecting the sandbox gameplay. Saints Row was financially successful for THQ, but the other projects that were being published were not, and in 2012, THQ filed for bankruptcy. Volition would be up for grabs and received interest in various publishers including Ubisoft, Electronic Arts, and Warner Brothers, but ultimately would be purchased by Coke Media and designated to be assigned to Deep Silver. Despite the change in publishers, Volition continued to work on the Saints Row series, releasing Saints Row 4 in 2013, which sold over 1 million copies in the first week, while being met with critical praise. It would be the last successful Saints Row game. In 2015, Volition developed and released an expansion to Saints Row 4 titled Saints Row Get Out of Hell to a mixed reception. Critics didn't care for the short nature of the game, lack of plot, and repetitive side missions. Gamers agreed as it didn't sell well compared to the rest of the series. The downtrend continued with the release of Agents of Mayhem in 2017. The game was seen as a spin-off of the Saints Row series based in a parallel universe. Instead of gang members, players were agents who were trying to stop a supervillain organization. The game was seen as another disappointment with critics and gamers both being disappointed in the repetitive and grindy nature of the missions. It sold poorly and led to a reportedly 30 layoffs at Volition. The end was near for Volition. The developer needed a big hit after two misses in a row. Volition decided to reboot the Saints Row series after not giving the series a proper release in nearly a decade. In 2022, Volition developed and rebooted Saints Row, simply titling the game Saints Row. Coke Media decided to give Volition time and space for this entry, hoping to rekindle the magic of the series, but the game was not successful. Volition had wanted to step away from the previous humor as the developer had outgrown the toilet humor and sex jokes. Instead, Volition wanted Saints Row to act more like an action movie. The final Saints Row was released with tons of bugs, rendering it difficult to play. Gamers hated the game. While many of the comments focused on the glitches and bugs, many gamers also focused on the terribly written characters and the cringe humor. Volition had abandoned the humor that made the Saints Row series so popular, and it was the final nail in the coffin. With three disappointments in a row, Volition was seen as expendable after its parent company, Embracer, had a multi-billion dollar deal fall through. 
Embracer restructured its assets and in 2023, the developer was shut down with its last message coming from a post on Instagram announcing its closure. So that was the rise and fall of Volition. What were some of the games that you loved that this developer created? What were some of the games that you didn't care for? Leave me a comment below and make sure to subscribe to my channel to watch more the rise and fall of video game companies. Thanks for watching.